Good morning and welcome to Health Talk here on AM 1270 and 96.5 FM KXBX. I'm Paul Thomas and with us as always, Bill Kearney of North Lake Medical Pharmacy. And Bill, we're, we're a ghost of a show today because I'm actually out of town this week. Yes, you are. Yeah, well, I'm not out of town. I'm just out of the office. I'm on vacation. On vacation. Okay. A staycation. Yeah. yeah. A stay and, and go nowhere, do nothing. Yeah. Um, probably still come into work for some reason or another vacation. But you probably have a, <laughs> a honeydew list at home that you have you to know, do. You uh, know, the only real thing that I've got planned um, is going to be to drag the decorations out and do the house and get the tree and, and all mm. that this week. Um, you may or may not know my son is homeschooled. Mm-hmm. So I've agreed to give my wife a week off of homeschooling, even though she had last week off because of the you know Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, I told her I would do the schooling with Matthew. Uh, for this week as well, so I am I am doing things. I'm not just you know sitting around in my you know pajamas watching TV all day. So darn it, you know I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so many football. I was talking to uh, uh, one of our uh, retired physicians the other day, and I said, "Are you uh, going to go down to the Bay Area with uh, uh, to see your grandson?" And he says, "No, my uh, one of my relatives is going to drive my wife down there," and he says. I'm going to watch football all day. He <laughs> says, I am so looking forward to Thanksgiving Day so I can watch football games three all day. Three games. <clears throat> three yeah. games, you know, on uh, on Thursdays. Are there three? Yeah, so you got the, the early one is Detroit, which I think I think the, 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 the tradition is always Detroit has a game and Dallas has a game. Yeah. So the it's early always, ones. It's always Detroit and the Chicago. Uh, well, actually, I think it's Detroit and um, – Gosh, who did I see? It wasn't Chicago. Oh, was it? No, I, it might be Minnesota. Yeah, which oh. is, should be a good game because yeah. the Vikings are really good this year. Right. Um, and we're talking about this post Thanksgiving, of <laughs> oh, course, because yeah, this is yeah. a recorded show. But yeah. uh, Dallas is uh, somebody, and then and then there's one at night too. I think the Redskins play at night uh, against the Giants or something like that. So yeah, I mean, if you're a football fan, Thanksgiving can can really be a day. Well, and when they're uh uh, when they're listening to the show, they'll know the results <laughs> of uh, all those games. So there's we'll, we'll have to revisit it tomorrow during yeah, our live show. There's probably a Warriors game, game going on at the same time. But uh, yeah. anyway, I you know uh, that's what we do. Uh, Thanksgiving, we get all the Christmas out the day after Thanksgiving. We normally have all of our uh, children home, and uh, this year at Thanksgiving, we only had. Um, four of us, and so my wife had a 24-pound turkey. Wow! And w- it, me and her and my daughter and uh, and her daughter, our granddaughter, and uh, there was uh, plenty of food left over. So uh, I'm sure that uh, when uh, our listeners hear this uh, program, they've all put on a few, uh, a few extra, extra pounds. Yeah. Uh, you know, unfortunately for us, we went away for Thanksgiving, and we don't get leftovers. Because when you visit somewhere else, you don't usually take food with you when when you're done. You know, the host gets to keep it, and so we don't. Well, we if don't you'd have to walk away with anything, if you'd have been to my house, you would have had <laughs> oh, <that> plenty. Because <laughs> my wife cooks for uh, 24, whether there's four or two. Uh, you know, every time we she makes a casserole or a soup or something like that, great big crock pot full, and you know we have wow. uh, a bowl, and then it goes in the freezer. So I was uh, uh, looking to to bring some stuff out uh, on Thanksgiving Day that was in the freezer, and here four bags of soup, different (laughs) kinds, fall out. Really? (laughs) And on these uh, winter days that are coming up, of course, you know, there's nothing better than a hot bowl of soup, so I have to remind her from time to time. Uh, And and we had steaks in there, too, not for Thanksgiving, but... uh, invariably if we're having somebody for dinner and we're having steaks she goes and buys a fresh steak although we have uh, several in the uh, the freezer that uh, were ready to be cooked so anyway um, this is uh, the week after Thanksgiving and if you haven't got your flu shot and you were exposed to all of those uh, relatives and friends or if you were on uh, aircraft or uh, going to Grandma's house for Thanksgiving, and you got there, and there were all these new faces. You need to uh, make sure that you've had your flu shot. Um, just um, the day before Thanksgiving, and two days before that, uh, we did uh, as many flu shots as we did in the beginning of 
the flu season. So uh, the flu is starting to go around now. If you uh, talk to anybody who was in school uh, the week before Thanksgiving, uh, they had told uh, us and the teachers have told us that it's be go beginning to uh, get into uh, the school system. And when that happens, of course, uh, especially during a holiday, uh, we take up contact. And if you get the the flu vaccine, the you're going to uh, have about 10 days to develop immunity on it. So we're hoping that you all uh, knew ahead of time and got your shot ahead of time, but we still have uh, plenty of flu vaccine if you didn't do that. So um, just want to give you a heads up on uh, the possibility of this flu season being one of the worst flu seasons that we've had, and that's all due to uh, if you listen to us uh, before Thanksgiving, uh, we talked about the flu in Australia, <clears throat> and it was uh, quite bad compared to uh, former years. So uh, they anticipate because of that that we will have a, a pretty difficult flu season. So uh, the other thing is, uh, and I keep getting calls, and I, I talk about this all the time uh, on the radio, and I, I will continue to talk about it until... Uh, this vaccine gets on the market. It's called shingle, uh, Shingrix. Um, it is a, a shingles vaccine uh, similar to Zostafax, which has been on the market for about eight years. It is, Zostafax has kind of left its, um, is losing out its strength, um, only designed really to last about five years. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, it is uh, two shots, and instead of one shot, it's a little bit more expensive uh, than the Zostavax vaccine was. It is an inactive vaccine, just like the flu vaccine is an inactive virus that activates once it gets into the system. The key part about this is, and I, I, I told a, a good listener of ours the other day uh, to, um, uh, that wanted to get a Zostavax shot, I said, why don't you wait? Uh, I, is, I, I kind of expect this to be um, on the market before the end of the year. And why don't you wait and get um, the flu shot or the, the shingle shot when the new vaccine comes out? <clears throat> now, I know you're taking a risk, especially if you're older uh, and your immune system is compromised. I wouldn't suggest that. But if you're a healthy person and you're going to... Uh, qualify to get the shingles vaccine, I'd wait until this new one comes out, and hopefully it will be out in December, uh, and uh, we will have it. You will hear me talk about it on the radio. Uh, it will be all over uh, the ads on television and radio and in print uh, telling people uh, you've, you've seen the ones by Merck with uh, the Zostavac shot, <coughs> which um, is very graphic about what shingles really is. And this company, uh, Smith Glaxo, is also very well funded. And I'm sure they will put millions and millions of dollars into advertising this vaccine. The great part about it is it's 90% effective. Uh, the Zostavax we have now is below 50% effective. So, uh, but some protection is better than no protection. And so, uh, we have encouraged people all along to get the Zostavac shot, and this was less than a month ago that the Food and Drug Administration uh, okayed um, this new vaccine, Shingrex, uh, to be uh, implemented in the United States. It's been in Australia and Canada, uh, been quite effective for all age groups, although it's mainly indicated for 50 uh, and above, but we get prescriptions all the time from physicians who want us to give uh, the vaccine to younger people who have had a history of uh, poor immunizations uh, and poor immunity <coughs> from uh, infections, bacteria, and viruses. Uh, of course, um, a, um, a virus is uh, much more difficult to control than a bacteria is, but they're kind of catching up with each other because of the resistance of our body to uh, the, the uh, amount of antibiotics that we've had in the past. So, uh, and you've got two more holidays coming up, <clears throat> another reason to keep immunized, and um, if you're having any uh, uh, 
relationship or contact with a, a, an infant, uh, you need to be getting a, um, a, sh a uh, uh, whooping cough shot, uh, Tdap, uh, tetanus diphtheria, and uh, pertussis. So um, we just want to make you aware that uh, the baby has no immunity when they're born uh, of whooping cough, and if you contact the virus, uh, you give it to the child. So it's it's really important if you have someone in your family that has an infant that grandma and grandpa are coming to see for the first time, <clears throat> make sure you get your Tdap shot. Well, after Thanksgiving and everything, we're thinking about uh, how much weight we gained and what we should do. And um, one of the things is um, that increases your weight is salt. And there's a lot of confusion about using salt. If you're confused about it, I, I'm not surprised. There's a steady back and forth claims uh, about reducing the dietary sodium, which represents 40% of all the salt molecule. And it's um, crucial to our well-being, countered by claims following the advice can sometimes be a health hazard. Uh, some studies have concluded that only people with high blood pressure uh, need to reduce salt intake. And those people such as myself who have controlled uh, hypertension or high blood pressure uh, are keyed upon frequently to watch our salt content. Uh, the overwhelming strength of the scientific findings um, really supports the advice from major health uh, organizations that most Americans could shut, uh, could, should cut back on their sodium for the sake of their health. It's responsible for most cases of hypertension in the Western society, and that's the leading risk factor, factor for heart attacks, strokes, and kidney failure. What we don't realize is how much salt is added to our foods by processors and restaurants, and uh, not from the salt shakers as much as the main source of sodium is in our diets. Uh, protecting the health of the most vulnerable requires a society with wide reduction in sodium. Uh, the recommended daily intake for healthy American adults is 2,300 milligrams of sodium a day. That's about one and a half, or one and an eighth teaspoonfuls of salt. Um, I was just cooking uh, some um, uh, hamburgers for um, my family and last night, and I had uh, seasoned salt, and I had garlic salt, and I put it both on the burgers. Do you add salt, Paul, to your... Uh, salt and pepper every yeah. time. And if I watch yep. if I watch a food show, uh, I mean, they... Oh, they and, put on the generous and helping. And yeah. especially if they're, if it's um, oh, a, yeah. a piece of meat, you know, that, uh, you know, they say, add plenty of salt, add mm -hmm. plenty of salt. Yeah. And I, I guess... Um, that brings out the flavor in it, and I always have um, uh, used the salt shaker uh, rather generously. Mm -hmm. uh, what they indicate is if you start cutting back on salt, that gradually that uh, that flavor that you're you're used to um, will um, maintain itself, and you will if you start using liberal quantities of salt after you cut back or quit using salt, that uh, everything that you taste that's, that's out of a can or uh, processed will taste so salty that you can't stand it. So um, a single restaurant meal, like a, a lunch of soup and a sandwich, can easily add up to a day's worth of sodium. And, of course, that's not all we have. That's just our appetizer. Uh, there was a team last year in the New England Journal of Medicine that an average reduction of just 400 milligrams of sodium a day. Now, remember, uh, we're allowed 2,300 milligrams a day, um, but reducing it by 400 milligrams a day could save 28,000 lives and $7 billion in health care costs a year. Uh, 75 countries, including the United States, have adopted or advocated salt-lowering goals. Uh, whenever this is happening, rates of hypertension and deaths from cardiovascular disease are really declining. Just for a little uh, moment when you're in the grocery store, take a look at a few things and see how much salt in, is in there. Remembering 2,300 milligrams a day is 
the maximum amount you should take. Um, take a, a, a can of tomato juice and see how much salt is in there. I don't have the figures, but I know uh, tomato juice happens to be one of my favorites. And when anybody makes a Bloody Mary, of course, I wouldn't do that. But if, uh, if they did, they add much salt. They add celery salt, regular salt, uh, and they, add, they increase the amount of salt substantially. Uh, to be sure, now, sodium is something that we have to have. Uh, it's an essential nutrient, and it's is, as is chloride that makes up the rest of the salt molecule. So uh, we evolved from ocean dwellers, and human tissues still swim in a salty sea. So uh, our kidneys are fine-tuned machines for keeping blood levels of sodium uh, within a physiological healthy range. When there's too much sodium on board, the kidneys dump into the urine for excretion. And as long as I've been in healthcare and as long as I've been in college, and if I learned this once, uh, I forgot it. But when more is needed, the kidneys reabsorb it and pump it back into the blood. So what we do is overwork the kidneys. Unfortunately, faced with the excess of sodium to deal with, the kidneys get worn out. Sodium levels in the blood then rise along with water needed to dilute it, resulting in increased pressure on the blood vessels and excess fluid surrounding body tissues, which is um, swelling. So, you know, you wonder why, why this is so controversial. And, uh, science has resulted in claims that it is unsafe to reduce sodium intake below 1,500 milligrams a day is one reason, and this was the Director of Nutrition at the Center for Science and Public Interest at, in Washington, D.C. Uh, very few people consume so little sodium, and most of those who do are sick to begin with, so they eat less and consume less sodium. But when a study was published that runs counter to prevailing beliefs, it tends to get undue media coverage. It's uh, like the standard practice is one thing, but when something's an exception to that, it becomes news. Um, as, as drinking alcohol has been, as coffee has been, they're finding, you know, six or seven kinds of cancer that coffee can uh, cure or treat if you're drinking four to six cups a day. Uh, two alcoholic drinks a day are an are, are a uh, enhancement to your cardiovascular system. So also feeding the debate is resistance from the food restaurant industries, which uh, fear the consumers will reject a change in recipes. Um, there's two developments that indicate no negative effect on the sales of consumer when the salt is reduced. In New York City, there was a requirement that a chain restaurant place a high salt warning uh, a salt shaker icon, which you'll see on uh, menus when it's a heart healthy thing. Um, and they'll put it next to menu items that contain 2,300 milligrams or more of sodium in a serving. Even some fast food salads can exceed that amount. And that ruling recently withstood a court challenge by the National Restaurant Association. So uh, six years earlier, the city created a national salt reduction initiative, which is now more than 500 partners, including some food companies and restaurant chains, that seek to lower sodium levels for restaurant-prepared and processed foods. I would imagine, and, uh, and I apologize if I'm wrong, but I'm, uh, I would imagine if you eat in an Asian restaurant, that with the monosodium gluconate and the salt that we want to prepare uh, to add to it, that there, there would be a lot of those icons on the menu. Uh, a nationwide sample of 172,000 households revealed that between 2000 and 2014, the amount of sodium from packaged foods and drinks declined by 396 milligrams a day on an average person, although most households still exceeded recommended amounts. So um, I'm, I'm just thinking what it would be like if, um, if all the processed foods that have salt, and I'm sure salt's a preservative in many of those things, uh, if uh, those would become healthier for you uh, than they are now without the high sodium content. Um, General Mills, which is a, a, a company that makes cereals, lowered sodium in 10 different categories of foods and snacks by 18 to 35% by the end of 2015. 
uh, Pepperidge Farms, uh, Sara Lee, Oro Wheat, which have whole green breads with no more than 140 milligrams of sodium in each slice. So uh, Wheaties, a uh, company staple, uh, and it fizzled uh, when they had reduced uh, sodium in that product. They later simply lowered the sodium content of the cereal without telling anybody, and the sales stayed the same. So consumers are becoming aware of low-sodium products, thinking they will lack flavor. Um, but as I said, when it's reduced gradually and without fanfare, they hardly notice. Um, so uh, cutting back, you know, I did this at one time. I cut back on my sodium, and I went to uh, a potassium salt rather than a sodium salt <clears throat> and it didn't uh, it, it didn't really affect the flavor at all and there's probably something wrong with using a potassium salt but uh, corned beef and cured olives and smoked fish are now um, unpleasantly salty to those people who or and that's natural salt that's in them uh, to people that have been uh, withholding salt so um, a little trick you might do sometime is prepare foods without adding salt and then sprinkle some on at serving time. You'll get a bigger bang for your buck uh, while consuming less sodium. Uh, producers of chips rely on that tactic. Consumers taste only the salt on the service, which uh, is more than enough on chips many times labeled low sodium. Likewise, when buying canned or packaged soups, select one that says low sodium and if desired, add some salt at the table. Um, I'm noticed more and more in restaurants now uh, that you have to ask for salt, uh, especially in high-end restaurants. And I'm not sure whether that was as a compliment. It would be uh, not complimentary to the chef if you ask for salt or any seasoning uh, because I've noticed that in um, restaurants, of course, when somebody else was paying the bill, um, in the high-end restaurants. Those are ones I can't normally afford. Um, but uh, I've I just noticed recently that there is less and less um, in those uh, high-end restaurants of any kind of, um, of uh, enhancements as far as uh, spices go uh, on the table when uh, you're at a high-end restaurant. So I... Uh, I still consume too much salt. Paul, you are you a, a salt person? More salt than sweet. Yeah, I am too. You know, I don't, I don't eat a lot of sweet things. I don't have a craving for sweet. I don't either. But if it's popcorn or potato chips yeah, or, or salted uh, peanuts, I was eating oh. those last night, and, and uh, olives. I just snack on olives because I like the salt from the olives and yep. the brine. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not really a sweet guy. And I'll put salt on top of salt, <laughs> which isn't healthy, I know. But, uh, like, last night I was eating salted peanuts, and they just weren't salty enough for me. So I have this, like, thick salt, you know, like a... Uh, uh, sea cor- salt? Yeah, sea salt. And I'd put, like, a couple of little pieces of it in my hand and then get a peanut or two and eat it with the peanut to make it more salty, <laughs> which I know is horrible. We're, uh, we're bad. We, I know. We, we both know better. I was in a restaurant in Las Vegas, um, and... and this was a restaurant that had no uh, salt or pepper on the table, but they served us bread, and it was a, a wonderful bread, and it had a salt crust on it. Wow! Yeah. Okay. And it was it yeah. was to die for. We yeah. ate two two baskets full <laughs> before. I've <laughs> seen there's like a, a roll that uh, that you get like a famous sandwich, like a roast beef sandwich in in Buffalo or something like that. And it comes on this certain type of a roll that's got the salted crust on the top. It looks really good to me. Well, I was talking to somebody uh, the other night that had um, uh, uh, prime rib, uh-huh. and that's the way they cook it. They cook it with salt crust on the outside. Mm-hmm. And they said it seals in the, the moisture, and it's to die for. Yeah. yeah literally <laughs> die for. <Yeah. laughs> After you eat it. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> but it is one of those things that we, you know, I, I shouldn't preach to people about, you know, I preach to you about not taking your medication and not being compliant and those kind of things. And I shouldn't preach to you about <clears throat> how you use uh, the salt shaker because uh, I am um, pretty bad. My wife is even worse than I am. Uh, uh, this morning, I uh, I have contractors working at the house at six in the morning, and so 
uh, I got up and I made um, three poached eggs, which I do, or soft boiled eggs, which I do every morning. And I was watching them uh, working on my deck, and uh, I put um, pepper on it, hard coarse pepper and salt on it. And then I uh, had to run out and open the gate for somebody, and I came back and I added more salt, forgetting I'd put the salt on before. And I could taste the difference. It wasn't a, a good taste when you add too much salt on it. So that's one of the things I need to work on maybe uh, for my New Year's um, um, Eve uh, or New Year's Day uh, resolution. I will uh, cut back on the salt. I don't, uh, um, I don't put it on sandwiches and I don't put it on, uh, it's, it's mainly processed or uh, non-processed food, um, fish, uh, of course potatoes, and um, any kind of steak or or red meat that I eat that I shouldn't be eating also. So uh, We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the new blood pressure guidelines that we talked about a couple weeks ago and what they mean for you. Hi, my name is Bill Kearney, pharmacist and owner of North Lake Medical Pharmacies. Do you take non-prescription medications to relieve your headache, fever, or arthritis? If so, you're not alone. Americans consume more than 50 billion non-prescription, over-the-counter medications each year. When taken as directed, they are safe and effective, but they're still serious medications. At Northlake Medical Pharmacy, our pharmacists want you to know they are always available to talk to you about your medications, including over-the-counter medications. So talk to our pharmacists for your good health. We also want you to know that we care about your health. By working together with our pharmacists, you can get the most out of the medications that help make you feel better when you're sick or help keep you healthy. So remember, talk to our pharmacists for your good health. North Lake Medical Pharmacies, with two locations to serve you, on Hill Road next to Sutter Lakeside Hospital and outside the Bruno Shops Mart at 347 Lakeport Boulevard. This is the Caltrans Road Information Bulletin for Lake and Mendocino County State Highways for the week beginning Friday, November 10th. Mostly no planned work November 10th through the 12th in observance of Veterans Day, but crews will respond to emergency situations. In Lake County on 175 near Arroyo Vista Road, weekdays expect five-minute delays. In Mendocino County on Route 1 from Crispin Road to Cameron Road, weekdays expect five-minute delays. At the Noyo River Bridge, weekdays expect five-minute delays. And south of the South Fork Eel River Bridge, Ridge weekdays expect 10 minute delays. On Highway 101 north of Ridgewood Ranch Road, weekdays expect 10 minute delays. And near the Hermitage Vista Point, expect 10 minute delays. On 128 near the Sonoma County Line, weekdays expect 5 minute delays. On 162 west of Pukinney, weekdays expect 10 minute delays. On 175 near the Lake County Line, expect 10 minute delays. And on 253 near Singley Cattle Pass, weekdays expect 15 minute delays. That wraps up the bulletin. Like us on Facebook for more updates. That's Caltrans District 1. Harwood Memorial Park presents the annual Laytonville Christmas Bazaar Craft Fair featuring over 60 local artists and crafters on Sunday, December 3rd from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Harwood Hall in Laytonville. An opportunity for photos with Santa will take place during the fair between 12 noon and 3 p.m. for a suggested $5 donation. For more information, call Laytonville Healthy Start at 984-8089. Raising your family, tending to your animals, growing your own produce, preparing for the seasons, living the country life. Hi, I'm Jody Henke, host of Living the Country Life. Catch me every Monday through Friday at 9.35 a.m. and 4.35 p.m. for ideas and inspiration for your place in the country. That's Living the Country Life here on AM 1270 and 96.5 FM KXBS. We bring the community closer together, supporting business in every way. We're helping make your dreams come true, working hard for you. 
The Lake County Chamber of Commerce would like to recognize their member of the month, Tom Lincoln from Lincoln Levitt Insurance Agency. Lincoln Levitt Insurance Agency insures hundreds of local and out-of-county businesses, providing such coverage as fire liability, business auto, workers' comp, umbrella liability, director and officer liability, and group benefits. It also provides a full line of insurance products to local farmers and agribusiness owners. To request an insurance review, Tom and his staff are located at 650 North Main Street in Lakeport. They can be contacted at 260. 37162 or through the website at lincolnlevitt.com Lake County Chamber of Commerce We're steady and strong Help to shape the future All right, we're back. Well, while we were on the break, we uh, <coughs> Paul and I talked about all the bad foods that we eat uh, Pickled herring and and yeah, uh, smoked salt herring, smoked yeah. herring oh, and yeah. um, uh, pickled. You ever have pickled pig feet? I have had pickled pig feet. Yes, and uh, and I, yeah, it was good. I liked it. Yeah, yeah my uh, and back in all the bars in Iowa, when of course when I grew up, kids could go in bars. You know, they had the cleaners in there and the hardware store, and that mm-hmm. was part of the bar. Uh, in a rural town, uh, they had. Uh, pickled eggs and that's and something that my my brother-in-law eats all the time that I've, i haven't tried either yet that sit, my wife says that, that you know when she was growing up it was the worst thing ever to see him eat pickled eggs but and then pickled uh sausages too you know that are uh, and I, I guess all that requires salt so salt yeah pickling uh, salt and <clears throat> pickling spices do you ever pickle your own things or no jar no, no. Uh, we used to uh, my wife used to make uh bread and butter pickles uh-huh. and uh, now we we don't can anything but uh, um, we're, I mean, we, we we had a cave because back in Iowa tornadoes and hurt mm-hmm. you know so our cave would be full of canned vegetables when I grew up, and fruits and potatoes mm-hmm. and all those things so if our house blew away we would have an ample supply of food sure yeah but I've never uh, never done any canning myself I don't know how to do it but yeah, we tried to do some peppers last summer, not this summer, but the summer before last, and um, you know they were okay. Um, the the recipe I had called I did some some vegetables, mixed vegetables, and I did some peppers. Um, it seemed like the peppers got a little; they didn't keep their integrity. They got soft and squishy. You know what I mean? And so I don't know what caused that, or or if they just stayed too long. I'm not really sure, but they just became more mush than they were you know you know, you know i had a, a nice jalapeno it's got a yeah. little crunch on it well i had an interesting thing i i grow jalapeno peppers too and um i uh put i you know see the end of the season and i had two or three left and uh you buy this thing of mixed vegetables or peppercinis and and uh so i threw them in there mm-hmm. because they were so hot i that it was hard to eat the whole pepper sure. and i took them out just last week and um uh, and ate, ate all three of them. They had lost. They were they were um, uh, firm. Yeah. But they had lost a lot of the heat for some oh. reason. They probably uh, seeped into the uh, into the the brine or the. Yeah, I could you know, probably drink that and burn probably... my throat up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we we bought up these pickles that we found um, that were these hot pickles. They were like you know like uh, the the chips you know like mm-hmm. the, the sliced pickles and ate all the pickles and kept the juice and then. We've had the juice now for a while, and we just keep adding regular pickles to them, and they make the regular pickles hot because we like the hot and spicy yeah. p- pickles. And so uh, I don't know how long we could keep doing this. But. Well, there, there was a person that used to go to the the uh, farmer's markets that sold hot pickles. I think it was from Upper Lake. Mm. And, uh, but, but if you leave them too long, they get mushy too. You yeah. gotta, you know, yeah. That's what I like about Vlasic. The, Vlasic, uh, yeah. Uh, and Clausen's are pretty good too. Yeah. Yep. Well, I better get back to high blood pressure <laughs> here. Did you know you're, on the, you're listening to the pickle show? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we talked uh, a couple of weeks ago about the new study that came out with um, uh, the high blood pressure recommendations, and they were um, <clears throat> stricter than they'd been in the past. The percentage of Americans with high blood pressure jumped from 32% to 46% in one day when the American Heart Association and the American College of uh, uh, Cardiology issued new guidelines. 
uh, for the condition. That doesn't mean all those people suddenly need to be on blood pressure medications, and we talked a couple of weeks ago about uh, diet and exercise being used first. Um, but uh, two weeks ago on Monday, they uh, redefined high blood pressure as a reading of at least 130 milliliters of mercury for the systolic, the upper one, and uh, the uh, bottom number of 80. So the um, 80 or less for the diastolic pressure, and previously the cutoffs had been 140 over 90. Now that number increased in the last year or two because it used to be 120 over 72 uh, but this new definition is going to affect younger people tripling the number of men under the age 45 considered to have hypertension and doubling the number of women under 45 so it also eliminates the category of pre-hypertension if you remember once you got in between 120 and 130 by the time you got up to 140, they wanted you treated, even though the scale said until you're 140 or higher, uh, you don't need to be on medication. We know now that blood pressure level between 130 um, and uh, 139, 80 to 89 uh, doubles uh, your risk of cardiovascular complications, doubles your risk from uh, what it was before. So. Uh, complications such as heart attack appear to people with whose blood pressure is um, under uh, 120 over 80. Those people are uh, less complicated to and less likely to have a heart attack or a stroke when you keep it under 120 over 80. The most people find themselves in that range. However, changes in diet and exercise routine are uh, what's needed to bring those numbers back to normal. We talked about <clears throat> normal. Normal is a number less than 120 and a bottom number of less than 80. Elevated is a top number between 120 and 129 and a bottom number less than 80. Um, I had a, a lady come in yesterday, and she had been taking her blood pressure. Uh, she'd been taking off, taken off a medication from uh, a hospital in San Francisco, and the physician said she no longer needed to be taking it, but monitor her blood pressure. I monitored her blood pressure. <clears throat> I took it three times, which you have to be diligent when you use an electronic blood pressure machine, and if you get a reading that's not acceptable the first time, wait at least five minutes and then redo it again. Uh, the first time uh, I put the, the cuff on and uh, took her blood pressure, there was um, an error in the machine because I wasn't up high enough uh, on her systolic pressure. Um, then I did it um, one other time. And th things you have to remember when you're taking your a blood pressure with an electronic machine both feet need to be on the ground. Your arm needs to be level with your heart, even if you have to put a box underneath it uh, to make it approximately level with your heart. Your palm has to be open, and that little hose that takes the blood pressure has to be over your brachial artery, which is right in the center of the inner part of your arm. So most people, you can see that brachial artery uh, without them without you putting a, uh, a, a cord around it or a piece of elastic around it like they do when they're taking your blood sample. So, um, but all of those things have to be the same. Uh, feet on the ground, arm even with your heart, palm out, and still. Um, and if you do that, you will get a fairly accurate reading. She was getting a, and I'm not saying it was her fault, but her heart rate, her blood pressure read okay, but her heart rate was way over 100, and she was concerned. So uh, we took her blood pressure, and it was, wasn't was within the new guidelines, but it was certainly within the old guidelines, and then took her heart rate, and it was within guidelines too. So either there was a defect in the machine, or 
uh, there was a defect in the way maybe that she put the cuff on and read it. But it just didn't make sense to me that the blood pressure was in range and the heart rate was way elevated uh, because they're interrelated. But lots of times on these electronic machines, uh, the heart rate is not consistent. And she took it two or three times herself, and each time it was very high. So um, flagging elevated blood pressure earlier will help people motivate to make life changes, such as eating a heart-healthy diet. How many times do we talk about that? Uh, that can lower blood pressure drastically in, in the long term. Uh, but it's important to monitor your blood pressure and work on lifestyle changes. If you're above 120 over 80, it's also crucial uh, not to rush to medication. And, I, you know, you would think that I would promote you taking more medicine. But <coughs> what the, excuse me, what the experts are saying, uh, that the drug treatment to lower blood pressure is only associated with a reduced risk of death and cardiovascular disease in people whose baseline blood pressure is 140 or higher. So if you're 128, even though 120 is ideal, uh, you're not really at risk to uh, have a, a stroke or a heart attack from high blood pressure. And there's no strong evidence that such pills will help people with the lower numbers. Now, I, my blood pressure readings are uh, very low, uh, 116 over uh, 69, 68 normally, a uh, heart rate of 66, 67. Uh, I work out a lot. Uh, I'm not the healthiest human being by far of most people, but I'm also on a beta blocker, and a beta blocker is a drug like altenolol or metapropolol, which keeps the heart from being stimulated when your body is in an excitatory uh, state your heart rate doesn't react to that central nervous system stimulation. So the fact that when you get a stress test, when you're on a beta blocker, you have to quit taking the beta blocker in order to um, get your heart uh, level, your blood pressure up high enough and your heart rate up high enough that they can measure whether or not you have a problem or not. So you need to know your blood pressure numbers. Even before the recommendations were issued, uh, 13 million Americans were walking around with undiagnosed high blood pressure. That's why they call it the silent killer. You don't normally have symptoms. And if you leave it unchecked, that pressure can damage the blood vessels throughout the body and increase your risk for heart attack, strokes, and heart failure. And you've heard me use this example many times. Try a garden hose. Uh, turn it on. Put your hand around it and squeeze it or or bend it over, and you will see the diameter of the blood vessels um, increase substantially, but there's no way, no place for the water to go, so it stretches those blood vessels. So um, over a period of time, then those blood vessels become weak, and you can get an aneurysm, uh, a blood clot, uh, it's really important to detect your high blood pressure early so you can adjust. And there's diuretics that get rid of the fluid around your uh, blood vessels that uh, cause the heart to work harder to pump the blood through. Um, you should have your blood pressure checked at least once every two years and more often if you're 50 or older. Um, you have other risks for hypertension. For most people, it's a good idea to have it done every time you visit a health care provider. So if you're initial reading is elevated, don't panic. And that was the question I asked our, our customer yesterday. I said, many times uh, you get a high reading and then anxiety kicks in and you can elevate that blood pressure uh, just by worrying about what it's going to be the next time. And you do it, and the more you do it, and the more frequent you do it, uh, the worse the blood pressure reading gets because the Blood vessels don't have a, change, a chance to expand. After you put that cuff on and you uh, squish them down so you can make the reading, it takes it a good five minutes to uh, expand back to the normal uh, place that they were before. So you can't get an accurate reading if you just do one after the other after the other. Um, if your blood pressure is high and you have no history of high readings, your doctor may take another reading after about five minutes. If that's still high, uh, another in a couple of weeks to confirm. Most physicians will not <coughs> put you on a medication immediately. 
Now you could have other symptoms and it could be uh, swelling in your lower extremities. Uh, it could be an arrhythmia or something where your heart is not beating normally. It doesn't necessarily always have to be blood pressure. So uh, get a home blood pressure monitor. We have them from 150 bucks to 50 bucks. And um, they actually have uh, normal uh, blood pressure uh, readings on them. Uh, one thing you will notice differently if you go into a doctor's office and they take your blood pressure. Nine times out of ten, it'll be over your shirt or your jacket, and your arm will be hanging down and won't be level to your heart, and that's the reading they will get. When you do this at home, you don't have it over your shirt, you don't have it over your coat, you have it on your bare skin, your arm is level with your heart, and your feet are flat on the ground. So uh, a difference, even though they're using an electronic monitor, it isn't the same as what you will take home with you. So. Uh, to get the most accurate reading. These are microphones inside those digital machines that have to pick up the blood reading. So um, if you're diagnosed with high blood pressure, a, a home monitor may help you get it under control. Uh, lifestyle changes um, are definitely uh, significant, just like they are in diabetes. I mean, you can lower your, um, your blood glucose level by 20 or 30 points just by diet and exercise. Um, and uh, a slightly elevated reason, uh, reading doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to have to develop uh, high blood pressure in the future. Um, maybe you should consider medication, uh, but regular exercise, and I'm talking about walking 30 minutes a day for four or five days a week and avoiding excess sodium uh, should bring your blood pressure back in regular, normal terms. Now. You, we forgot to address one thing, and that is maybe you have a clot. Maybe you have too much plaque, uh, which are caused from, is, is caused from uh, too much cholesterol, too many fats, and they've occluded the inside of your blood vessels and makes the diameter small. Uh, that isn't necessarily going to change by uh, it, it, diet will help, exercise will help, but it's not going to get you back to that level without drugs. So um, they... They recommend only considering drugs if your blood pressure readings are over 140 over 90 uh, for most adults or 150 over 90 if you're older than 60. Uh, I think that's stretching it a little bit. Um, one of the best prescriptions for high blood pressure is the healthy lifestyle. So uh, they recommend the dish diet, uh, fish, poultry, beans, seeds, nuts. Uh, Paul was telling me at break time that, you know, he didn't get enough uh, not just salt on salt his nuts. Salt on my nuts, yeah. yeah. Got to put some more. Got to <laughs> <Gotta know>. have <laughs> more salt. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I've tried buying <clears throat> unsalted, dry roasted peanuts. Yeah, they don't, they don't cut it. Or peanuts in the shell that aren't salted. No, got to have the salted uh, shell. So we'll probably, we probably won't be around in five or ten years. But I know. Huh? <laughs> if, if you do need drugs, you, uh, there are several kinds of drugs that lower your blood pressure. It's uh, uh, it usually makes sense to start with the oldest and safest and least expensive, which is usually a diuretic, to take the extra fluid out. Um, chlorothalidone is a potassium sparing diuretic, and hydrochlorothiazide is a, um, a low uh, milligram um, a diuretic that can help you. Lots of medications you have will say... Um, uh, the, the name of the drug, whether it's altenolol or metapropolol, and it'll say with HCTZ. That's hydrochlorothiazide. So you have a diuretic in the medication that you're already taking. Um, you can drive up blood sugar levels. Uh, if you have type 2 diabetes or at risk of it, you may need to be monitored closely by your doctor or consider another drug such as uh, an ACE inhibitor. I don't expect you to know what an ACE inhibitor is, but I'll give you a word, lisinopril, and, um, and what it does is op relaxes your blood vessels so it opens up so the heart doesn't have to work so hard. Uh, if you take uh, blood pressure medications, check it with your doctor uh, on a regular basis. Uh, one side effect of blood pressure drugs is dizziness, and you wonder why you get dizzy if you take blood pressure pills. Well, uh, many times it opens up, as well as open up the blood vessels around your heart, it opens up the blood vessels in your uh, brain cavity also. And so when 
the blood goes up to the heart and the head to oxygenate and bring oxygen down into your system, uh, it opens up the blood vessels. So as soon as the blood goes up there, it drops down to your toes until you get used to it. And so it will cause you, when you get up quickly, uh, the blood drops down to your toes and it, there's no oxygen in there and it causes you to, have, to faint. So um, especially if you're older. So, and there are other medications that you take that can do the same thing. Um, it may be super cautious, especially among uh, the elderly, so they personally want to start with the lowest of dose of medication and then reassess it in a couple of weeks. If you're undergoing intensive blood pressure lowering or more likely to experience a decline in kidney function, uh, that's why it's important to check periodically with uh, your physician, your internal medicine doctor, or your family practitioner. If you're on medication for a while and have gotten your blood pressure uh, to target levels, consider talking to your doctor about lowering your dose, especially if you've implemented other lifestyle changes, such as weight and exercise. I think I've told you that um, I lost uh, almost 70 pounds. It did not take um, my blood pressure down at all, um, but exercise did and uh, still continues to. If um, It's been a little chilly out lately to be swimming, but when I swim, <clears throat> if I've had a pizza or something that I don't normally ever have and it seems to uh, glue itself right onto me, um, I would uh, I'd swim another 15 minutes than what I normally would swim and um, ended up uh, not gaining any weight from that. So we know the exercise works. Uh, melatonin. Uh, almost everybody has heard about melatonin, and it's a natural uh, occurring hormone that uh, in, is in the body that help regulates the sleep cycle, and it is produced by the pineal gland in the brain. They increase and decrease throughout the day. Typically, the levels are high through the evening, stay elevated overnight, allowing a person to sleep. In the morning, those levels drop back, allowing a person to wake up. Uh, it kind of <coughs> sets your time clock. It makes, uh, if you're taking it as a supplement, when you take it, it will say it's bedtime. Um, it's produced in the body, but a person can acquire minimal amounts from food. Some vegetables and fruit contain small amounts. But as you age, you manufacture less melatonin. Uh, and it may help alleviate the insomnia and sleep-rated problems. Uh, shift workers may use it to help them fall asleep during the day at regular hours. But there are problems with overdose, and I've never read this before or heard of it before. But an overdose will vary from person to person, and some uh, may find it actually caused them to be more awake, which is the opposite of the purpose. And we'll find this out with other drugs. People can take antihistamines like Benadryl and, and, and be wired on them. Kids can take an antihistamine and it will react in their uh, childhood as a stimulant rather than a sedative. So additional symptoms of melatonin can be crankiness, I think uh, that I may have taken some at one time, uh, headaches, dizziness, upset stomach, diarrhea, joint pain, anxiety, uh, people with high blood pressure are taking a medication that lowers blood pressure so should speak to a doctor before using it uh, because some of those medications decrease a person's natural uh, production of melatonin, which may prompt them to take uh, melatonin to help offset the balance. Uh, correct dosage anywhere from uh, a two-tenths of a milligram to five milligram. We sell mainly three and five milligram. Uh, it is um, not recommended for children unless they have a neurodevelopmental disorder that makes it difficult for them to sleep. Um, if a doctor prescribes it for a child, it needs to follow the exact dosage prescribed. The um, United States Food and Drug Administration does not regulate melatonin. Supplements vary in strength, so you can't tell for sure what strength you're taking. Uh, some of the medications that react with it are birth control pills, which would cause the body to produce more. Um, 
immune suppressors and some blood thinners may also react with melatonin. For example, melatonin may intensify the effect of some blood thinners causing a risk of excess bleeding. Not normally, but like I say, these things can happen. We are, we are human beings, we're not machines. Uh, many people assume that it, because it's a natural supplement that it's safe uh, to take with alcohol. Um, that isn't necessarily so. Uh, that's something that um, uh, a few people react to, and you may be careful about doing that. But you need to see a doctor if when you're taking it you get high blood pressure or shortness of breath or chest pain. Uh, treating an overdose really will depend on the severity of the symptoms. In an emergency, a doctor will focus on stabilizing the condition. Uh, a person experiencing chest pain uh, may require additional uh, intervention. So in most cases, the best treatment is just not to take it. Uh, there's no research indicating that it's unsafe uh, to stop using it or to start taking it. Uh, if a person has to stop using it because of side effects, a doctor or a sleep specialist may be able to recommend other methods to help you fall asleep. Now, this isn't to upset you or make you uh, really concerned if you're taking melatonin, but you need to be aware that this, like all natural substances, and this is from the 1994 um, uh, Supplemental Act of uh, Natural Substances that uh, that said these did not have to be checked by the Food and Drug Administration, dietary substances and natural substances. So anything that you buy off the shelf in the pharmacy or the health food store that is a supplemental thing is never has to qualify what those ingredients are. It could be something completely different, and that's why I would stay with um, a, a pharmacy or a health food store that you... Uh, recognize because we go through wholesaler distributors that are uh, very cautious about carrying <coughs> substances that aren't uh, what they say. They look for a label on them that makes them uh, safe to consume. Um, still doesn't tell you what the quantities are. So for people uh, struggling with insomnia like we were talking about, a sleep specialist might be able to give you additional uh, suggestions. Uh, it could be you need a CPAP machine instead of a, uh, a medication that helps you do that. Um, it is, uh, if it's something that you want to start with, uh, try the lowest dose that you can and then uh, add to that as you go if it's effective. And uh, be careful about the medications that you're using that are probably... Um, uh, could be interacting with the melatonin, and we want to make sure that uh, we avoid uh, situations where uh, adding another medication could com complicate um, your health environment totally. So um, we're hoping you're uh, recovering fine from uh, your Thanksgiving. It's been a week now, and uh, hopefully uh, the indigestion has disappeared, the hangover has disappeared, uh, you're back uh, on the regime again, getting ready for the next holiday, and uh, we hope that uh, you uh, had a healthy Thanksgiving, and hope that uh, you, if you didn't get your flu shot before Thanksgiving, then uh, get it as soon as this program is over, and uh, we'll take care of you. So we'd like to remind you we're North Lake Medical Pharmacies with two locations for you at 5136 Hill Road East across from Sutter Lakeside Hospital. Call us there at 263-6192. Or outside the Bruno Shop Smart at 347 Lakeport Boulevard. Give us a call there at 263-1328. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Bill. And we'll see everybody back here again next Wednesday at 10 a.m. for Health Talk right here on AM 1270 and 96.5 FM. KXBX Lakeport.